Professor Harold Rode is known for having served as an Islamist affairs advisor to the U.S. Department of Defense from 1982 to 2010. And he's an expert at deciphering the many conflicting messages coming from Israel's regional partners. ILTV's Aaron Viner asked the Middle East scholar what the truth is behind Israel's relationship with Egypt and Turkey. In Turkey, there is no freedom. People cannot say what they want. And so reading the press and even talking to people in the streets can be dangerous for them. And so we can't know necessarily what they're thinking then. The only way you can know is by talking with people who've left the country, who won't be quoted publicly and won't be in newspapers because they're afraid. Turkey is living at the moment under a tyranny. And so what do they think about Israel? Whatever the, what Erdogan wants to do, they're prepared for. Erdogan hates Israel. Erdogan hates Jews. Let's now talk about the situation with Egypt. On one hand, we have President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, who's offering to host a Middle East peace conference between Israel and the Palestinians. On the other hand, what we just saw in Rio was really rather shocking. It shocked much of the world when the Egyptian judoka, Islam al-Shahabi, refused to shake the hand of the Israeli judoka, or Sasson, after he lost to the Israeli. The peace that Israel has with Egypt is between governments, the government of Israel and the government of Egypt, not between the peoples of Egypt and Israel. The people of Egypt, first and foremost, are concerned about their daily lives. They don't think about Israel all that much. Do they want Israel gone? On some abstract level, the answer is yes. It's not a Muslim state. This was, this state, the state of Israel, is on territory which the Muslims believe is theirs. Once Muslims conquer a territory, it's Muslim forever. And there is no compromise on that. There's only temporary solutions, ceasefires, if you wish. So the people of Egypt aren't particularly interested. The most important characteristic in Middle Eastern culture is honor. Honor is what other people say about you, not what you actually do. And so, from an Egyptian point of view, number one, by shaking the hand of an Israeli, he is um, sort of defaming the honor of the Egyptians, of the, of the Muslims, because that means he's accepting Israel's right to what Muslims think is, Israel, is Muslim territory. The state of Israel is the land of Israel is part of the Muslim world from a Muslim point of view. And Jews have no right to rule here. Jews can live as politically and social inferiors. So can Christians. Muslim lands must be ruled by Muslims. And that can't be changed, at least until there is an a intellectual um, reform. Uh, a thought revolution. That cannot be changed until there's a thought revolution in the Muslim world. And that, I believe, unfortunately, will only come after a tremendous defeat, a catastrophic defeat of the Muslim world by the West, led by the United States, if it has a leader who is prepared to stand up for American values. I don't want, I hate what I've just said. I don't like the idea that there should be a catastrophic defeat of the Muslim world. But America must stand first and foremost for American values. And they, if, any, if, a non, if, if a Muslim wants to immigrate to America and assimilate culturally and accept the basic values of the United States, that's fine. He should be accepted with open arms. But if he comes to America in order to make America part of the Muslim world, that is unacceptable. America is founded on the values of Mount Sinai, the values which unite both the Jews and the Christians.